charts. So I see that on the weekly chart of gold, we had that uh, consolidation on the weekly chart, which was good. We wanted to see that because mm -hmm. if it didn't consolidate away, then, you know, we know that this area up here is not good for drawing yeah. zones. Yes, yes, yes. Right? If it was up there, it wouldn't have been good mm -hmm. for, for drawing zones. So um, then that would have just brought a little bit more difficulty to uh, try to determine what's going on in the charts. So the next thing I'm looking at also is uh, the reaction that we got on this uh, weekly chart down here. If price does rally up, I'd like it to drop a little bit more first and stay here and then give us something like that. Because then we'd have a nice, after contacting the, uh, the monthly demand, it mm -hmm. took out that first daily supply which was like yeah. it was going to happen definitely yes. um yeah it was just it was because when a zone is so close to a, mm -hmm. a larger time frame zone it just gets taken out easily yeah. so that got taken out rallied up to the uh supply above so um let's see is that uh daily supply nested yeah it is it's nested it in the is, weekly yeah. yeah okay yeah so that could be taken out interesting so the top of that weekly is up here yeah hmm. very interesting because the top of the weekly is up here like this so if price comes up here it would have removed the weekly supply but not yet consolidated or created a weekly demand and we still got that descending trend line there which will be an issue. I don't want that there. Mm -hmm. Ideally, I want this here and this trend line out. So if we got a really big push up like that to take out the weekly supply and then consolidated and dropped to demand, that would be okay. Yeah, and then we could take the trade of the daily um, demand curve. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. weekly exactly. supply will be too far down. Weekly demand will be too far down. Well, weekly uh, demand would, uh, like if it did, so let's see here. Yeah, so I had, I had posted this uh, this year to keep an eye on uh, this monthly area of demand because mm -hmm. to me it made sense. It followed the rules. It follows the logic of having that switch zone. And um, that that's a big indication that price is going to... Uh, pretty much head higher so looking at that hey Steve I hear you now I can hear me. yeah hey. I could hear train tracks I could are, are you are you are you locked in a box or something <laughs> sounds like somebody locked you up in a box and you're calling for help do you need help yeah I feel like I'm locked in a box yeah <laughs> um, it, it sounds it's like my headset i don't know if it's if it's sounding funny or if i'm um, so I'm gonna... it, it, it sounds like you have a pair of socks in your mouth <laughs> yeah that's normal <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay so then you're all good yeah um okay so uh, let me give you drawing capabilities um, um, yeah, um, uh, pen. You know the bit to the left just now you were just looking at? So I've just joined. So oh, okay. Behind. I don't know if you discussed it already. But the, that, uh, the last low uh, from back in 2018. Yeah. We got... Yeah, we do have one here. Got one there. Yeah, the thing is, we uh, classified this here at the bottom as uh, emotional. Oh, yeah, that's true. All yeah. right, yeah, so yeah. then, um, so then we should have something like this going on. And then. 
but it didn't cl it didn't uh, break the trend line properly. Yeah, it didn't. Yeah. I'm gonna leave it off on my charts for now. Yeah, the price action there. Uh... Make a note on mine to say it's not the best demand, so hasn't created the best supply. Yeah, but we do have these two trend lines, okay? Because you know, again, when we look at the space here, right? And then it's got this one here. If let me do something different here. You got three trend lines. Yeah, I got three. Cool. Yeah, so we could have this. And it could start doing something like this. Down, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it could break out here and then have a demand zone here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It could do that. So just notice that other trend line. And then there's this one, the latest two. But the further price goes down, right? And the further it separates from this trend line, the, the less important it will become. It'll be more about this trend line here. Yeah, the one from her. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> that makes sense. It's, we were talking about it in our last class, too. Yes, um, piece, yeah. You place a, buy, uh, a sell stop below here mm -hmm. with a target here. Oh. So basically, this is a technique that the institutions use, okay? I, I would have never thought about this unless I saw the institutions do it. And how do I know the institutions do it? Because I've been tracking the COT report and their positions for a long time and paying attention. <clears throat> so what they'll do is uh, mm -hmm. they'll average into a position, right? So what they'll do is they'll, if price is dropping down to a demand zone, let me draw drawing here so if price is dropping in they do it out of necessity so if price is dropping into a demand zone they start getting in short positions up here or sorry long positions up here okay they're getting in long and they're also getting in short actually I should have done that okay so in between the short positions they're getting in long and so you're saying, okay, well, why would they open up long positions up there so high in price if price is going to be continuing to drop? Okay, well, because if they got in all their long positions at the demand zone, it would cause such a movement upwards, such a, a mm -hmm. quick movement upwards that they wouldn't be able to get in at good prices. Mm -hmm. So how they do that is you get in long at high prices, but you're also getting in shorts, which propels price down. But when price gets down here, you know what happens when you close those short positions? It's okay, as so if you're, you're, it's as if you've taken those long positions down here. Mm -hmm. Okay, because the losses that you're taking, uh, the drawdowns that you're taking on those long positions, are offset by the profits that you're taking from your short positions. Mm -hmm. You understand? So yeah. if all those long positions price dropped and it hits demand now, and let's say it drew down your account a hundred bucks, okay? It drew down your account a hundred bucks. If those short positions that you opened up gave you a profit of a hundred dollars, if you have targets at that demand zone to close those short positions, now you've taken a profit of $100, but you have a uh, negative of $100 showing um, on your equity. So it's basically balancing it out. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, it's almost as if you're opening up those long positions lower. Yeah. Because that's basically what you're doing. Uh, so my idea was the perfect theme trade on this would have been to open up long theme trades here and how do I know if it's going to drop how I would know is if this weekly area of uh, demand got taken out that's how I would know mm -hmm. and I know that if it was to be taken out price would have dropped to here at a minimum so 
All I would have yeah. to do is very good chance that this continues higher because we got three month demand, multiple tests of it, but holding. And uh, right now, price is in that monthly area of. Hold on. Yeah, monthly area of supply. We're expecting strength from the CAD. And remember, the US solid Japanese yen has got a lot of demand to break through, which mm -hmm. means it's likely more going to hold where it is over time, which means this will likely go up like that. So mm -hmm. uh, weekly is just in the middle of the ocean, so there's really nothing to to trade mm -hmm. off of. Wait a minute, let me see something here. I'm personally in on this one. I'm you what, sorry? I'm in on this trade through this daily um, one. You're in long? long? Yeah. I, I, nice, I've, I've you... um, on most of the yen pairs actually. I just Why feel that the yen it? weakness. I'm Why don't you post at... it in the? Uh, in the you know uh... what? I, ne I never do actually. I'm in the euro yen from one two three two ten. So it can start building mm. more momentum now. Um, yen weakness over the longer period of time. Mm. And uh, and Canadian strength. Yeah. yeah. So that could work out well. Going off of there. Okay, so um, I think... But we do expect, are we expecting um, short term strength in the yen curve? Because we only are waiting for the euro yen to drop to the demand there. Is it yen strength or ah. euro weakness? Uh, for what pair are you asking about? Euro yen. I know you're looking for Euro. an entry on Euro, Euro yen. strength. Euro, Euro strength and the, and the yen not doing much is what um, I'm basing that trade off of. I know we'd expect a temp some temporary drop in the in the Euro yen Euro. to contact um to contact the demand. Mm -hmm. The daily demand. All right, so okay, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you the rest of my trades if you want it. <laughs> I'm going to get lynched. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, like yeah. I was, gonna, I was actually going to ask which one it was you got in on. Yeah, I see it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Cadian. I did. I didn't place a, a buy limit there though. I tried to go on a lower time frame and see, see how fast we act. Uh, I think I took it off the hourly. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I was doing. I started but it's... Um, going through our charts and just like looking to see like okay where could i have you know known that it would have been a good trade kind of thing it's a lot yeah. of work going so was the there hour. it is was was there a one hour momentum shift off of that it wasn't the the entry wasn't strictly uh supply and demand that's why i keep it to myself because i don't want to confuse anybody oh, okay. or... it Let's was see. more a reaction from there and then a kind of like a pullback and then i got in uh, it looks a bit different on my broker. It would have been... Well, I got in exactly there. Let's have a look. It is 79.461 on my broker. So that would have yeah. been the ideal entry, right? There. Look, look, at the, look at the entry there. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's Unbelievable. Awesome. That's a one hour momentum shift off of daily. Because remember, yeah. whatever whatever zone prices react. That's it. 
That looks so, so nice. But my stop the only... is underneath the loaf rather than down here. It was a bit risky. Yeah. But yeah. more risk to reward. Uh, the only thing was was there was no, other zone. That's it. Similar, similar so kind watch, of thing, right? So watch for the same thing off of this area. One hour yeah. momentum shift. Mm hmm And I like that because that was a nice strong reaction from that demand zone. Very strong. Like this one and as well. Broke a trend strong. line. And now we got an uptrend here. So this is a daily uptrend. Which was stronger than what was here because it wasn't in an uptrend at that point. It was a momentum shift up. True. So now you got a, a very strong uptrend. So this could work out down here. Yeah. And that so would relate to uh, the Euro Yen with the slight Yen strength. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's good. But it's just that monthly supply in it. 